right? All right, so today we're going to go over exponential growth and decay. We've been kind of working on it for the last few days, so this is going to be the, the day where we can kind of summarize everything that we're learning and go over the notes one more time. So exponential growth and decay. is the lesson, and the formula for this is y equals a b to the x power, so if we remember correctly, a is our initial amount. Multiplier. And X represents the amount of time. Okay, so the interesting thing about this formula is the multiplier. This is where we need to get the bulk of the instruction to make sure we know how to achieve and find the right multiplier. So in these problems, everything comes across as either appreciation or depreciation, growth or decay. And to calculate it, we always have a percentage that we're either going to go up or down by. So just to give us a little bit of work on converting percentages to decimals, let's just do a couple here to practice. If we have 25%, can anyone tell me the rule of how we can convert that to a decimal? All right, well, you basically... You move the decimal two places to the left. Oh, I right. See. I have done this before. So 25% would equal 0.25. So we've, we've converted 25% to 0.25. Let's do a few more of these just converging, converting percentages to decimals, and then you'll see why. So if we had, let's say, 1.5%, what would that equal when you move the decimal two places to the left? Point zero one five. Yeah, point zero one five. Very good. All right, and just one more to wrap it up. What if we had, let's say, three percent? Move the decimal spot two places. Point zero three. Very good. Yep. <laughs> All right. So that's going to come into play when we have to calculate these multipliers as we have them in the formula. So we're going to have two types of multipliers. We're going to have growth and decay. Now, when we're talking about a multiplier, it's 100% of the number. And when we convert that to a decimal, that equals 1. So when we start with our multiplier, we always begin with the number 1. So if we're doing growth, it'll be 1 plus the decimal that we convert from the percentage in the problem. And if it's decay, it'll be 1 minus the decimal that we get from the problem. All right, so let's put it into practice and do a real problem. So. I have uh, 
if Bill purchased a motorcycle for $13,000. So let's go ahead and use that $13,000, right? We know we're going to use that number. And it will depreciate by 4% each year. So we have our initial amount. We have our multiplier. And how much will the motorcycle be worth in 10 years? 10 years. 9,000. Now we have our time. So this is it's one of those products that if, if the value goes down. Right. So now we look at the problem. If it says growth, we would do 1 plus the multiplier, but it says depreciate. So we know that we're going to have to do 1 minus the multiplier. So it's a depreciation problem or decay. So let's, let's turn this percentage of 4% into a decimal. We've been doing it in practice already. So, yeah, go ahead. Move the decimal two places to the left. 4% will become 0 0.04. So in our calculators, we will have the initial amount. Then we know that it's depreciation 1 minus 0 0.04 is going to give us our multiplier. So pull out our calculators. 1 minus 0 0.04 leaves us with 0.96. So that's our multiplier or our decay rate. Since, it, since it's less than one, we know that the numbers will be getting smaller. It'll be depreciation or decay. And then we have time, which is our value for 10 to the 10th power. All right. Do you guys have calculators? Can you type it in just like that? We got 13,000. Times our multiplier, 0 0.96. To the 10th power. Numbers coming up? <laughs> so it looks like it is after 10 years of 4% depreciation, the motorcycle will be worth $8,642.82. So that would be our answer for why. The final amount is $8,600. $42.82. All right, now that we have the explanation of how these problems work, let's just go ahead and practice it a couple more times with some new problems. All right, so we have 4A. It says a car depreciates, a $12,500 car depreciates by 9% each year. So we heard the keyword depreciate, so that means we have to do 1 minus the converted percentage. What's 9% turned into a decimal if you move the decimal point two spots to the left? <coughs> 0 0.09, great. So then we have 1 minus 0 0.09 will be our... No, these are just some problems that I pulled up for you. We're just going to kind of just write them on paper. So you can start with your initial amount. Go ahead and write down 12,500.
Now we've created our rate of decay, 1 minus 0 0.09. And the time it says is five years for the fifth house. All right, so if we type that in the calculators, we have 12,500, our rate of decay, and the exponent of five are in five years. We see that the car is depreciated to 7,845. So our final amount will be 7,800. All right, so now I'm going to ask you guys, what are the significant numbers in this next problem? Yes? Uh, we're just going to pull it off the projector for now. We're just going to write the numbers. It's only a couple numbers to write. So that's what I'm asking right here. What is the initial amount in 4B? So read the problem 4B up there and tell me what you find is the initial amount. How much did they buy the baseball card for? Oh, we're yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We're just going to do probably these three problems. It's, it's not going to be very much. All right, so how much did they buy the baseball card for? That's the initial amount. Who's got it? 50. Great. So we're going to start with that. 50. And are we going up in value or down in value? What's the key word there that's going to tell us? Increases, great. So we know we have to have a multiplier that's going to be greater than 1. And what's our rate of growth? 3%. Okay, so now converting that to a decimal, what would that be? Move the... To the right. Move it to the left two spots. Okay. Oh, yeah, to the left. So 0.03, great. So we would have 1 plus 0.03. Three. That's just going to get us 1.03. That's how we're going to know that's our multiplier. And we're still dealing with the time of five years. All right, so we're ready to plug that in and see what kind of values we get. Our initial amount of 50, the multiplier of 1.03, and in five years, the baseball card has raised in value, only slightly, but it was only 3%, but we have $57.96. All right, let's go for one more of these. We have number five. Who can tell me the initial amount? 18,000, perfect. And are we going up or down? Is it appreciating or depreciating? It's the next key word in the word problem. Okay, we're going down, so we're gonna have to have a multiplier that's less than one. And our rate of depreciation is 25. So 1 minus, how do we convert 25 into a decimal again? Moving it two steps to the left. Right. So what would that leave us? 0.25. 0.25, good. 
They're all plus 25. Mm -hmm. So 1 minus 0.25 would leave us. I almost, yeah, I thought I heard it out there. 0.75. All right, and our value for time. How many years are we dealing with here? Four. Good. All right, any predictions how low this value is going to get? Decreasing 25% each year for four years. All right, let's plug it in and find out. We got 18,000 with our value for the rate of depreciation and for four years. Wow, so you can see that that was actually quite a significant change. An $18,000 car is only worth $5,695 after that short amount of time. Yeah, the value decreases. Right, since 25% is a pretty significant number, it, value, yeah. it decreases really quickly. So if you ever buy something used, you're like, kind of like the low price, we're buying something brand new. Right. That's the hard part about buying a new car is that they do depreciate rather quickly. How are we feeling on this stuff? Are we starting to understand the concept? How to create the multiplier? Start with the initial value? Yeah. It's good that you're getting practice with stuff this because there's a lot of applications for it. You can use it for investment purposes, you can use it for population changes. There are lots of uh, applications for this type of math. So I feel it would be useful to you guys to, to know it, to understand it. All right, that's probably good.